What is up guys, in today's video I wanted to go over React Native, Flutter and Kotlin for native Android development. And essentially we're going to be talking about some of the differences, which ones I recommend using and just covering the very basics regarding these frameworks. So to get started, let's go over and talk about these three. So as you may know, at this moment, you can develop for Android in either Java or Kotlin, and they are currently developing the multi-platform feature for Kotlin. It's called KMM, and it's going to allow you to work with multiple platforms using Kotlin. The only problem with this at the moment is I believe it's not a stable release yet. Every day they're working to improve it, and eventually it might even be up there with Flutter and React Native. On the other hand, we have Flutter and React Native, which are built for cross-platform development, and they just simplify like Life in making it easy to build both Android and iOS apps with just the same code. But of course there are positives and negatives to using each one of these frameworks slash languages to build your apps. For example, for Kotlin and Android, you only have that language and you can only build for Android. While it's going to be much easier to build an Android app because you have all of the native components and you can even specify your own native components, it is going to be much harder to build an iOS app because the cross-platform section of Kotlin has not been developed enough yet and the resources for it are quite small still. But that's going to build up in the future, so you never know. But for current day, it's definitely recommended you use something such as Flutter or React Native to do cross-platform. Knowing Kotlin and Java and native Android development is always a plus, so it's always good to have that on the backside to understand how things work. But otherwise, we have Flutter and React Native, which you can just build apps with either Dart or JavaScript. And there's also a lot of discussion regarding whether you should use Flutter or React, because you can build cross-platform apps with actually both of them. But there is one catch to using Flutter at the moment, and that is that you have to learn the Dart language, which I've never seen used in any other context. So it might be annoying. It's very similar to Java, but that's the only catch I have at the moment. Otherwise, Flutter is beautiful to use. You can build some very nice UI. I would like to say that it doesn't seem as straightforward as using Kotlin to make functions and actually do the backend for your app, but it is very simple to make some very powerful looking UIs. And I think a lot of the YouTube tutorials that are very short that have the best results usually come in Flutter. Kotlin just makes everything simple. If you want to make a notification or if you want to create an app, the components are fairly straightforward to use. And now they even have Compose, which is helping a lot with the UI. With React Native, it's really, really straightforward because a lot of us have a really good background in JavaScript or even a simple background in JavaScript, which requires us to not have to learn anything else to get started in React Native because our knowledge on JavaScript is directly transferable to using React Native. And also it has a style editor, which is very similar to CSS. So, I mean, I would have to say React Native so far has been the easiest one to learn just because of all the background knowledge I had in JavaScript and web development, which was only a couple months of knowledge. So it's very simple to jump into React Native, while for Kotlin and Flutter, you do need to do some more research, understanding how activities work, how fragments work, and so on. You need to actually dive into the code that is required to make these other frameworks work. But deep down, moving to my personal opinion, I've tried Flutter for a very brief period, so I can't really tell you how it is to build big apps there. I find Flutter very fun to work with UI, but as soon as I had to build some logic, I found it to be incredibly tedious compared to Kotlin and native Android development. I'm sure it's a lot better than that. I'm sure it gets easier than that. But as a first impression, I find Flutter to be very tedious when it came to writing the logic. As for Android, you have Kotlin, which I absolutely love. It's one of the easiest languages out there to use. It's filled with features based off all the popular languages such as Python, Java, and so on. It just combines all the great aspects of every language and makes it very easy to develop apps for Android. The downside is that this is only for Android. And again, they are developing the cross-platform side of Kotlin, but I do not think it is ready yet for developing production apps. Although that's probably going to change very fast because they have IntelliJ that supports this. And that means they are putting lots of effort into improving it every day. Otherwise we have React Native who's owned by Facebook. We have Flutter, which is owned by Google. And I believe Android, of course, is owned by Google as well. So, I mean, these are all frameworks that are incredibly reliable in terms of the companies. I would also like to say that React Native has very easy to understand documentation. 
But of course, there are going to be a lot of difficulties with building your own personalized native components because here we have a lot of native components that come with the package of React Native. And we can also install some packages, of course. But if we want to get very specific as we can in Android, it's going to actually take us writing either in Java or in Kotlin to actually put in that native code. And I'm sure it's similar in Flutter that there are some things you have to write in native code to make them function correctly. In React Native, I would recommend it more if you want to start creating some very powerful and very and very good looking apps without having to go through all the hassle of only making it for one platform. I personally picked React Native because I found it so easy to use due to the JavaScript and due to the CSS editor. It just made everything so simple. And especially if you are not planning on making the most complex apps in the universe, I think React Native is definitely the way to go because you can literally build, I would say, a big majority of the apps you see on the market today with React Native without any issue. And of course, it goes the same for Kotlin and Flutter. I just found React Native to be the easiest one for editing the UI and adding the logic. While Flutter was also very simple, I still preferred React Native. But the bottom line for today is that if you want to only develop for Android, of course, I definitely recommend using Kotlin and Java for Android development. And eventually they're going to introduce the multi-platform. But if you do not have a MacBook or an iPhone, there's not really much purpose in using these two frameworks unless one day you are thinking about transferring to MacBook to produce iPhone apps. Or if your company requires iPhone apps, definitely develop in Flutter and React Native. Otherwise, Kotlin is the easiest and the most efficient way to go for creating Android apps because it maintains a very small file size, it executes code very fast, and it's just the native way to develop apps. The other two have slightly bigger packages because they have to because they have to produce code for both iOS and Android. So that of course results in having bigger packages. But other than that, I think these two options are completely acceptable as well. And deep down, all of these frameworks have a lot of support and you can find an answer for literally any problem you might find for all three because they're so popular. The native development with Android might have documentation that's harder to read, but it is still good. React Native has some of the easiest documentation to read I've ever seen. And Flutter, I think, is all right. But with that being said, I hope this video gave you some perspective on which framework you want to choose when you develop your apps, depending on which system you're developing for. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or also, if you have your own opinion on which framework you prefer, I would love to hear why you picked your framework and what you use it for. But otherwise, with that being said, guys, thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next video.